Okay, I'm going to start with the best of Apple's recent keynote, the iPad Pro. Now, the iPad Pro's upgraded hardware features were as standard as you could expect. The screen was improved, as was the camera and the processor, basically all the standard updates you would have expected them to do with a hardware revision, so there really was nothing that surprising about it. The best feature for the iPad Pro was iOS 11. Apple have finally incorporated a variety of their macOS features and have implemented them into the operating system. After years of people asking, they have finally bought them over, to some capacity. And I don't really have any complaints with the software revisions. iOS 11 is a great and useful upgrade for the iPad Pro. If only Apple did this much work with iOS 11 for the iPhone, then this would have been a much better event. Alright, now let's talk about the revisions for the Macs, and then we'll talk about the iPhone. Apple have basically updated their entire MacBook line with more up-to-date processors and stuff, although they very slyly bypassed the MacBook Air. And they also released a new version of macOS. Before we had Sierra, and now we have... Hi Sierra. I didn't think the names could get any weirder, but Apple just continue to surprise in this area. And that's about the only surprises they have. And honestly, I don't give a crap about any of these new Mac features, and I am about to explain why. Now, I can't speak for all Mac computers, but generally, the increased amount of complaints and discussions you can find with Mac OS has significantly been increased when compared to what it used to be. Apple's own software is no longer fully refined for their Macs anymore, and I'm specifically talking from the perspective of reliability, which is something that Macs used to pride themselves on, and is also one of the primary reasons as to why they were priced at a premium, and why people like me were open to that premium. I mean, I wouldn't have bought the damn machine if I wasn't. But now that Apple has taken that reliability away, what the hell are you paying this premium for? Because good build quality and hardware is ultimately nothing if you can't rely on your machine to stand the test of time. Currently, I personally feel like I am obligated to get the most out of my Retina MacBook Pro because I paid £2,000 for it. But in regards to reliability and my overall user experience, I was far more satisfied with my mid-2012 15-inch standard MacBook Pro. So Apple can do tiddly price drops all they want. One of the most crucial elements of their Macs has now been compromised, and consequentially, their pricing is now an even more blatant scam. In fact, I've never told you guys this before, but I am so disappointed with the reliability and state of my current Retina MacBook Pro when compared to my previous one, that once I've gotten all my use out of it, I will be switching back to a Windows machine. I would prefer not to, but Apple clearly don't give a crap anymore about the stability and reliability of their Macs, that I don't see why I should spend thousands on an underspecced Mac computer when I can get much more value out of a Windows PC, which with regards to reliability, is not far off from Macs anymore. That's how much Apple has dropped the ball with regards to their desktop operating system. Don't try to sell us thousands of pounds worth of new hardware to experience the OS as we should. Deal with the problem with your current line of computers we have purchased from you first, before you decide to abandon them and tell us to purchase the next big thing. When Apple used to talk about their Macs during their keynotes, I used to always get excited. But now I feel frustrated and shunned. Unless I buy Apple's new products, of course, in which case they'll work just fine. But much like my current Retina MacBook Pro, even they will have a time limit. So those are my thoughts on the current MacBook line. It's just a ticking time bomb at this point, so honestly, all the new features are nothing if we don't get the reliability that Apple were known for. Now it's time to talk about iOS 11 for the iPhone. Now the easily influenced mind will tell you that the presentation for iOS 11 was fast-paced and packed with a ton of great features. Well, it was fast-paced, but it was mostly comprised of pointless shit, and I'm going to go through some of the main features right now. Messages. You now have an app drawer which provides you with easier access to your stickers and apps, Okay. Your conversations are now synchronized between iOS devices, which is a decent feature, but why Apple waits until now to implement it is beyond me. And Apple Pay has also been incorporated. And that's it. Those are your big updates for messages. They are so big, in fact, that Apple actually placed it on their list of their 12 biggest updates. If this is an indication for what we're in for, then we're not in for much. Oh, Siri is getting another update. Honestly, who cares? It's astonishing how far behind it is when compared to Google Now, and Apple keep trying to give it small new features, and they keep advertising it as if it's the next best thing. But as far as I'm concerned, they're just polishing a turd. If you have iOS, then you can install Google Now from the App Store, which is far more useful and proactive in pretty much all areas. They also say that Siri is learning what you write in your messages, and that it provides you with relevant news information based on what you look up on a regular basis. Again, I have already had this for years with Google Now. This is nothing new to me. Apple, you can keep trying to convince us with Siri as much as you want, but if the last few years are anything to go by, it is still going to be miles behind Google Now, and consequently, it is useless. I've wrote it out a long time ago, and I've been able to live without it, and your latest update isn't going to change my mind. Now, the control center has also been slightly redesigned. All they did was really just remove the background, and the only neat thing they did, in my opinion, was integrating 3D touch into the smaller tiles to expand the various toggles and settings. They also did some gimmicky things with live photos that any inexperienced mind would be 
amazed by, but people like me who are versed with filming and editing can see right through these tricks. They also gave a slight revision to memories, and they use a bunch of technical babble to convince you into thinking it's more special than it actually is. Apple also gave updates to maps, and honestly, who gives a crap? I still strongly believe that it is a completely pointless app for Apple to spend their time and resources on, because Google are far more efficient with this type of technology, as they have been developing it way before Apple even came onto the scene. And I am not the only one who thinks this, despite the numerous amount of Apple fanboys out there who will try and counter my point, when really, I bet they use Google Maps themselves. Well, counter this. When Google put their Maps app on the App Store back in 2012, within several hours, the app became the number one most downloaded free app from the App Store. It also acquired just under 8,000 reviews, with almost all of them earning 5 stars. And since then, the number of reviews have gone up to 155,078. So you don't have to take it from me, the proof is in the numbers. Apple should spend their time on more productive things, because if their Maps didn't exist, then everyone would seamlessly integrate Google Maps into their journeys and give it no second thought. When all things are considered, Apple Maps is the definition of a waste of time. Apple also gave an update to HomeKit, which if you have the proper equipment to use this with, then by all means, this is a great app. The only problem though, is that Apple just gave it a software update, and they were pitching it as this big, massive update. Hardly worth mentioning at an event, a simple update log would have sufficed. Apple also gave an update to their music app. You can now see what music your friends are listening to. Maybe some people who will be interested in nosing around what their friends listen to, but honestly, I don't care. How does this benefit anyone? You might be thinking that I'm making a big deal out of something small, but the thing is, Apple are bringing this up in their keynote. Usually, Apple will leave smaller stuff like this for you to witness yourself, but since they specifically mentioned it in their event, they apparently think this is a big enough feature that deserves the publicity. Now, Apple updated the design of their App Store again, and they have basically given all the applications categories, such as games and apps, etc. But again, we've had this in Android for years. Now, it might look like I am bashing iOS and praising Android, but I'm being serious here. I genuinely want Apple to impress me, much like they did with the software update for the iPad Pro. But as an Android user, many of this stuff I have already had for years. And as a result, I have nothing to be excited about. I just feel like I'm living in the past when Apple keep pitching these old features as new, and somehow they have the nerve to keep calling it the most advanced operating system in the world. Now the redesign of the App Store is useful, but it's essentially a novelty. Google have changed the design of their Play Store several times without bragging about it at an event and asking for a cookie. And at this rate, should we be expecting to praise Amazon on eBay when they update their own apps? This is just mental. About the only different new thing Apple did was incorporate preloaded videos of a particular app without you having to open a dedicated video player to view it. So that's kinda neat, but again, they changed the design of the App Store. Big deal! It's something that everyone's going to take for granted after they've used it for the first few minutes. Apple also gave us their own augmented reality app, which honestly is a fun tech demo, but we have been trying stuff like this for years now. The 3DS was doing some interesting stuff with augmented reality all the way back in 2011. Since then, there have been plenty of other apps that have utilized this too. And do you know what they all have in common? They are all gimmicks. People's attention spans on augmented reality is even shorter than it is for videos on YouTube. It's fun to try the first few times, but then it gets boring and you move on to something else. I mean, I can commend them for visually taking this to the next level, but much like everyone else, my time is valuable. When time allows it, I would rather just watch a movie or an episode of a TV show rather than spending large amounts of time with this. So my question is this. Why are these apps getting updates? I mean, by all means, if Apple wants to update them, then go right ahead. Be my guest. But what I'm asking is... Why are these apps being highlighted for the most advanced operating system in the world? For the most advanced operating system, these are quite basic apps that are getting the update treatment and there's nothing particularly exciting or useful about them. Most of these are features that you're going to forget about in a day or two after installing the update. My concluding thoughts is this. Whenever we get an Apple event, is this the peak of technological advancement that we can expect? Because if so, that's hardly anything to look forward to and get excited about like many people do. Regardless, it's not the features that I am personally looking to get from Apple because I couldn't care less about the iPhone. It's the competence and reliability. They have become so focused on sales figures and new products that they have practically ignored a large demographic of their existing audience. They release so many software updates, but none of them have fixed any of the problems with Sierra. An Apple solution to this? Buy a new hardware. Look at this new $5,000 iMac. It's our best performing machine. It's out December. Buy it. Yeah, if this is the direction they're going with their Mac lineup, then I want off this bandwagon and I'm going to hitch a ride with Windows. Apple really needs to revisit and pay more attention to quality control as it's something they were incredibly strong at. But now, it's one of their biggest shortcomings and I am honestly at my wits end about it. 
So, those are my thoughts on Apple's event. Regardless of what I thought, comment below and honestly let me know what you thought, and what did you think was the best and the worst thing that Apple announced? Be sure to let me know. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please give this video a thumbs up, and be sure to share it too, so more people will be aware of the show. And I'll catch all of you next time. Take care.